funny how most dockside reporter switchers are post sows, but this is a 242. Uh, I think what's even funnier is they just use a barrel on both ends, almost as a buffer. Just a good old wooden barrel holding number seven in place. Oh yeah, there's some F units and a T1 over there as well. They got a big boy. Alright, feel free to uh, pause the video here if you want to read this. But, Union Pacific big boy, 4012. Still here. Some valve here. place they got here. They turned the visitor center, or they used the roundhouse to make a visitor center. Got a switcher over there, they got a big boy. Real nice. Some diesels, and T1. They got some freight car, or a box car, and a Lackawanna caboose. I kind of like that design. I'm from the area where most cabooses are kind of squarish with a small central top cupola. So this is kind of a take on a bit round. Keystone, fancy box. Uh, does it say what it is? Consolidation. Hearing some rail squeaking. Some more switchers. Is that an S? No, not an S2. Maybe I don't know. Not keen on my diesels. <laughs>
Also, I'm saying this for myself and myself only, but... You put these little metal girders and you make them lay on top of a rail. I don't know. But uh, at Jason Fields, wherever you were with the... I remember the CSX SD40-2 and the thing and the troop car. We slipped on the thing. We don't do them here in Steamtown. So I gotta go to, oh my gosh. Um, I legit did not expect this. Um, okay. Wow. They actually cut this thing open. There goes my box. Holy jeez. You do not see that on the other side. Wow. wow. This is this is freaky. The whole um, the whole piston rod, the cylinder and the valve, and the, just open. It looks so weird. It's cool though. Look at that, you can even see the, oh, I'm putting the camera up, the Johnson bar, how it gets it to the baker and everything else. It's cool. Well, for those who don't know, I'm actually a big fan of um, industrial switchers. As nice as big engines are, you know, there's something about switchers. Cut the cab off there. What's this number, by the way? I think it's supposed to be 8. But, yeah. Pretty cool, though. Oh, what's this even? Do not climb and cut away. So they cut a hole in the tender. Bing, Chaplin, and C. So I don't know if I'm not allowed in this caboose or anything, but it's got passenger trucks on it. It's like one of those probably. salvages. And the railroads did keep these things under power, or uh, keep them rolling. Oh, here we go. True definition of a crew car. You get your. Oh, it's uh, stiffer than I thought. But you lay on that, I'm not going to. Keep some of your wrenches and air hoses down there. Pop Philly still. Open the window so when the passenger train comes by, you. Stick your head out, try not to get decapitated. Okay, so they have oil lamps, but they put electric lights. At least they get the pot belly. And you really think that this is a joke or something, but just about every pot belly stove on the railroads and even some off the railroads would say, if I'm if I am good, please tell the others about it. Basically they say that if the, the boost is keeping you warm at night. You'll uh, tell them that hey, it's a it's a worker, and the smoke's actually getting out. Ah, uh, we can't go in the cupola. Well, that's a shame. Nice caboose though. Front one twenty eight. I want to say is her name. Good deal. The walkway chain, another brake wheel. Switcher. And get yourself a, a handhold or a grab iron. Not really grab iron, these are grab irons here. 
So you kind of hang on to it if you didn't want to lean down. And you're leaning out of the thing to make sure. Looking yeah. back, you know, you know, nothing out there. And also, it's raining. Yeah, it was beautiful outside not that long ago, and now it's pouring. But I did want to say you got a combine flag and lamp holder on both ends. Wanna te be snow. Wanna te be snow. No, it's like I wanna something Phoebe Snow. For those of the uh, Lackawanna fans, I'm apologize, I don't remember what the T is, but Lackawanna Phoebe Snow. I do know that. Because someone had a model, or Scranton Hobbies down the street had a model of this exact car, not sure of the number, but it definitely was a 40 foot double chef MTH Premier of this car. And it's got the steel end on the back, and it's got the wood plating on the door sides. And apparently they let you in this, and they don't give you a step for the caboose, but they give you a whole platform to go inside a boxcar. I'm not a hobo, but, you know, I gotta try it. I gotta try this, for sure. And a nice pair of steps. See, I thought that was a build year. It was a 51, it'd be kind of late for it. I'm not interested until they show us some good power on that. Again, proving the value of a well designed weight guard. Diets, Victor, lanterns. Trains and the freight they carried helped this country grow. Scranton became an industrial center as the Anthracite Railway forged a lifestyle for the entire region. The coal car stood as a symbol of an industry and the people behind it. But Lackawanna engines hauled much more than coal. At first glance, many kinds of freight cars may look alike, when in fact each is designed to fill a need. They have one thing in common, the arrangement of the two sets of wheels, or trucks, if your cargo must be protected from the weather, you need a boxcar. Livestock needs to stay out of the weather. It also um, needs the fresh air, food, and water provided by a stock car. Do you think this would be for the kiddos? You might want to carry something that's too big for a boxcar. So it's a flat, that yeah. kind of load, you'll need a flat car. Um, but if you have something that might fall off a flat gondola. car... A gondola car is the perfect choice because it has size. If this is a game, I'd win it. Then again, and a rail fan. Load you have to dump. You'll probably need a hopper be an car. idiot if they didn't know this. The slope sides and gravity make unloading easy. Of Ooh, course, other times you want to carry something that won't go in a boxcar, gondola, hopper, or on a flat car. Absolutely disgusting. Tank cars are perfect for hauling chemicals, molasses, corn syrup, and milk. Before the turn of the century, a business's market was limited because of the short distance they were able to ship their products. But one day, a single piece of new freight equipment changed this forever. Yeah, the reefer. The refrigerator car. And we're in a box. Sell his products all across the country. And I will admit, the camera's the not American picking it up. This camera sucks. Actual butt for lighting, but I don't want to say it's made out of wood, but the roof definitely is sloped. No, it's steel. There's more speakers back here. That barrel is shouting at me. This continuing evolution to fit function plays a three-minute video. Okay. barrel. Again, proving the value it's kind of collapsed. Well designed freight car. Yeah, the lighting sucks in here. Trains and the freight they carry. But. Pretty cool. Spend some time in a, 
I've spent many times in a PS1 style box car, not a wood one. They think they can block me by putting plexiglass on the ladder. Looks like the stirrup grab stole there. I was gonna make a joke, but this video just started up below me. But uh, where's Jason when you need him? I found a mod and full full. Oh. There goes my YouTube career for voice acting. What is this? Handles on this back head do not move. Shame. Cute collection of builder plates and number boards. I think the steamer's back. Oh, here we go. It's my cheat sheet. Yeah, we have this at the park. I've never really had to look at it, but... Basically signifies all the American oh, yes. names and classifications for your steam wheel configurations. And they got one of those outside. And that's definitely thunder. Oh boy. Electromotive General Diesels. This is Steam Town. It. Oh no. The diesel invasion has begun. Then again, you don't. Um, okay, this is very familiar for me. I traveled all this way to see a picture of a metro Hotel 9. Another, another sensor went off, but, you know, I thought unpainted scale figures were only an O, H, O, and G, and probably N. I didn't know they came in one-to-one -one scale. That's pretty cool. Where can I find one? That had to be a dangerous feat. Looks like a rope bridge. Huh. Cool. I'm just going to breeze through this list really quickly. For those that think I'm crazy when I say those words, that's what they actually mean. Oh. Okay then. This, this weather actually sucks. Like a lot. That's what it looks like at the turntable. And my batteries are dying in this camera. Isn't that great? I gotta find another pair. But there's a hand car. And a tanker. And a big boy. I think it's pretty cool that they have the whole thing in a roundhouse, though, with the turntable. Right, let's, let's take a look at uh, Illinois Central 790. All right, in the rain, I know. Be careful. Safety tread. It's not the best. In the rain, and someone took the seat off of the chair. Also, pro tip, if you're in a thunder and lightning storm, it's probably not, not the best to be in a metal steam locomotive. Or on the thread plate, or in the tender. And know it's not a thread plate, it's a drop plate, I don't care. I think there's some coal in that firebox. I think I managed to find a seat, literally sitting on the window. Down here. We'll say, I think everything is still, or most of the stuff is still here. I mean, you got the sander, which isn't really that important, you know, just the sander. Johnson bar. Oh, she's stiff. She doesn't want to move. Okay. Throttle. 
Okay, I think they're locked the stuff up in here. What a wonderful day to be in Pennsylvania, guys. The tender. I'm gonna see something with that tender. Yeah. So I can't move. Aha, uh -huh, there we are. So that's where the coal would be. I'm gonna like weave the camera through that little gap. Quick fireman, open the hatches in the tender. We'll get a nice supply of water before the next tower and before we dry out. Actually, if you own a steam locomotive, it's probably best not to put rainwater in the tender. You would think it would work, but you need to actually treat the water. Alright, that was, that was a big boom. But because it's quiet, I guess I can uh, ring on the old bell. You know, for some reason, and it's probably just me, I'm almost seeing a New Haven resemblance. I think it might be because that lip on the top of the stack, or just the diameter and everything. Just, just from the front, nothing. You know, we never own pilots like that, or sand domes, or even cab windows like that. What about that smoke box though? I don't know. She's not in bad condition though. You know. There could be way worse. Yeah, there's more of that thunder. But if you want to pause the video here and take a look at uh, some of the signage, go ahead. The sky, just go back to the beginning of the video. The sky is just... Ugh. Anyway, I think I'm gonna go for a train ride. And then come back after to where the rest of this place. Hopefully it'll be nice looking. Also, that's a good picture for your turntable. Put a steam engine on the turntable. Don't show the table itself. Just besides that, show, show a steam engine on it. Good idea. Alright folks, it looks like we're coming into the final destination for a train. What did you release back for $5? Our engineer can't see where he's going when he's backing up. Alright, I'm not your heartbeat drop the book, because we have a very confident train here. here. So kind of like a bunch of superheroes working together, we may not be fighting crime, but each member takes a specific task and a series of skill sets to that task. They are able to be the eyes and ears of their engineer looking around various corners. He's uh, the strength here. I used to have a landmark little over uh, that office. Okay. Well, we are going through a local going yard of sorts here, as you will later on. And in that roundhouse, we have our only indoor storage space. As such, we have things that would never be sitting in a roundhouse. There should tell you that we have storage space for every piece. We don't. Uh, so some of you will see out here in the yard, you are able to walk around the yard. Two things. It's an active rail yard. Walk over the rails and look both ways. For your safety, please do not climb into any of these cars. We just want you to have a pleasant trip. Folks, uh, what will be coming into view in just a bit, it's going to be on the right hand side of the train, is Big Boy. And folks, Big Boy is created
2012 here is Big Line. It's created at the very end of the scheme. This is in the 1940s. So it's during World War II, and they needed a very large steam engine that would work in the western mountain passes to haul both people, passengers, and to haul freight as well. And that worked very well. In fact, unassisted, you could have two miles of train behind it. Of the 25 that were produced, eight of them are still in existence today. And if you've been following the news, they just got one on the Union Pacific did. And it was utilized for the 150 year anniversary of the Golden Spike, the Transcontinental Railroad. And if you had asked most railroad enthusiasts even a year ago, do you think they'll ever have a big boy running? Uh, most people, especially if they knew how much it would cost you, something that had asked running would say, oh, Kevin Snow. Uh, but hey, we were proved wrong, and that's pretty neat. Lives. The 
mines which were mostly interconnected, flooded, water from the river, and that effectively shut down that industry. Now folks, uh, this is as far as we go on this section of rail here. Uh, let not your heart be troubled, but we're not hiking back. They're going to be going backwards. So now So over on the left hand uh, side of the train here. We're known for this particular mural here in Scranton as the Electric City. The first city to have a fully electrified trolley system. And it is designed to be sitting in a specific place. The architect designed to have enough windows that you've got a full visual reference that you need it for where you are. So you can put those switches. So there are our switch stations similar to that building up and down the track. Now two of them are aligned because the architect designs are based on the need. The railroad spent over $40,000 to build that building we just passed at that time period. That's a jeep. That's a Long Island tender. But you don't know what it goes for. Yeah, not kidding. A Long Island rotary snowplow. And apparently they didn't know it was Long Island until the other day. Snowplow. No. But I am getting Central Railroad of New Jersey with a special number on that. Doesn't that number have relevance or something? Doesn't that number have certain relevance? Marty, we gotta get you back. To all my friends in Canada, you're welcome. They got one here. Actually, they have a few. 3254 from Canada is here. Wait, New Haven? No, never mind. But that looks pretty familiar. That's a B&O observation. She looks pretty good. Some truck, or some wheel sets over there. Better view. Oh, you get a smoke box view. Oh, that fan, you don't even want to know. It's 90 something degrees, it stopped raining. For those who don't know, I love to fashion a coat. So that fan feels real good right now. Up the steps. If anything, that's a... I'm oh, sorry to get in. That's a... Uh... I don't remember the actual term, but it's like a stack export almost. You park the stack or the exhaust port, probably stack, you know, these are mainly steam turntables, to get the smoke out and above the roof. Excuse me. Excuse me, footboards. Loco repairing, boiler washing, that's pretty cool. You know, she's the one who I just got a ride on, 
and you know to my friends out there who are saying you know 26 is a grand little engine not just that I'm a fan of industrial steam but you know I've, I've had worse steam train rides it was a good run though but for an industrial steam switcher she was pretty smooth nice smoke box view this engine as well, a lot of Canadian ones, I like the one right next to it, which I will show. The number, the headlight number board, sorry for the shakiness, I just want to put this down. The number board is almost like a license plate from Canada. Also, yes, my speaker cuts out when I do the things, so I'm sorry about that, but uh, I'm speechless right now. I'm not even going to turn the camera, but I can't believe it's just in front of me. Not that I'm like, I, I was speechless, but that's pretty impressive what I'm about to see. But yeah, this is another Canadian engine, but that doesn't have the uh, number board. In fact, it has a single number light board, but the headlight isn't so much. Look at that, they got a tender. Probably another 060. Not, there's another pilot wheel there. Probably a dock side or stripped down. But this is something. You know, we go to the Pennsylvania Railroad Museum and this was there. An S2 Berkshire nickel plate, and somehow it followed me to Steamtown a year after. And actually, I was touring with my mom, and I was like, you know, if the closest thing we're ever gonna get to seeing the Polar Express. This might be it, and I'm even closer because first off, it's nickel plate. It's not 1225. If anything, the Polar Express steam locomotive wasn't even 1225, fun fact. But, this is as close as I'm going to get for now. Whistle, and a yellow bell sticks out like a sore thumb. I do like the number though. Light. We got an information board which if you want to look at that. Pause the video. Missing builder play, although you can see the Lima Diamond. Someone recently bought I think a Bessemer in Lake Erie, Texas. On eBay. this was bought, they would definitely be getting two stars. Missing some parts. Vanderbilt. And a maintenance away crane. America. And that is a tiny hook. Uh, I think they're backing uh, 26 there. I don't think I'll be able to film it in time, even with the zoom, but 26 is going that way. And you can't even see it on the camera, so there you go. The stupid lighting. Oh no, they're bringing it on the roundhouse. Or the. Turntable. 